Good afternoon. Welcome to section 3.2, Solving Addition and Subtraction Equations. So before we begin, I want to make sure we discuss um, equality. Okay, because equality is going to be the basis of everything we do in this chapter. All right, so if I have 14 plus 7 equals blank plus 12, okay, there's a couple things that could run through your mind. You know that 14 plus 7 is 21. But does that make sense in this situation? No, it does not. And the reason that it does not make sense is that this means equals, which means whatever's on this side, the entire thing, would have to equal everything that's on this side. So 14 plus 7 is 21. Then something plus 12 would have to be 21. Okay? And we know 9 plus 12 is 21. So that should be what fills your blank. If I look at B, that's the same process. 9 minus 2 is 7. So 15 minus something would also have to be 7. Okay, we know 15 minus 8 is 7. So that is the answer. That's our solution for this particular problem. For the last one, same thing. This has to equal this. So 42 plus 9 is 51. So 12 plus what? would be 51. Okay, so what we're trying to figure out is what I can add to 12 to get 51. Now if you can't do that in your head, you know that you can do 51 minus 12 and that's going to give you the sum, the number that I need to add to 12 to get to 51. Okay, so 11 minus 2 is 9. Okay, 4 minus 1 is 3 and so 39 would be my solution. So what does the equal sign mean? Well, the equal sign represents equality. It means whatever is on one side of the equation is giving me the same as what's on the other side. So whether the numbers are the same or not, it doesn't matter. I know the sum, the difference, the product, the quotient of that number would have to be the same on either side. Okay, so in knowing what we know about equality, we have the subtraction property of equality. So as always, guys, I want you to go ahead and press pause and write these down, and then press play when you're ready to continue. So the subtraction property of equality says if you subtract the same number from each side of an equation, the two sides remain equal. Okay, so if A equals B, then A minus C would equal the same thing as B minus C, because I'm subtracting C from both sides. Okay. To further explain that, if we look at 6 equals 6, we know that to be true. If I subtract 5 from one side, I would have to do the same to the other side so that the root would remain equal. Now, do I still have the same number? No, but that doesn't matter in equality. You just want to make sure that each side remains equal. It does not have to remain the same number. So when I have x plus 7 equals 9, what you're trying to do in these equations is you want to know what x is. So we're trying to get x by itself. We want to know what x represents. So I'm subtracting 7 from both sides. And you have to do it from both sides. Some of you get stuck on just doing 7, 9 minus 7 and that's it. Well, if I do 9 minus 7 and that's it, then I would have x plus 7 left on this side still. That doesn't help me get any closer. So we're using these properties of equality to eliminate that. We know 7 minus 7 is 0. Okay, and 9 minus 7 is 2. What's x plus 0? Well, it's going to be x. And x will equal your solution. Okay. <clears throat> now we have the same thing for the addition property of equality here. If you add the same number to each side of an equation, the two sides remain equal. So if a equals b, then a plus c would equal the same thing as b plus c. Okay, so in the same way, I have 5 equals 5. If I add 4 to both sides, I get 9 equals 9. All right. <clears throat> I have x minus 2 equals 6, so I want to get rid of the minus 2. We know that any number plus its opposite equals 0. So this minus 2 is just like a negative 2. Okay, negative 2 plus 2 is 0. 6 plus 2 is 8, 
so we're left with x equals 8. All right, so you'll notice that when I have an addition problem, I'm subtracting because I want that number to be 0. And you're going to have to use your rules um, of our, I'm sorry, if our integer rules for addition and subtraction in order to do these. Another way to think about it is I need to make sure I am 7 minus 7 is 0, but I need to make sure that it's going to result in a 0. So when I have a minus 2, it's the same thing as negative 2. So negative 2 plus 2 is 0. They're opposites. Okay, so we're going to solve each equation, and then we're going to check our solution. All equations must be solved using subtraction or addition property of equality, so you must show that you are doing the same thing to both sides. If you do not show that, it would be incorrect. Whether I'm the person grading it or Mr. Kohlinger, it would be incorrect if you did not show that property. Okay, so we have things called inverse operations. Okay, <clears throat> and the inverse of addition is subtraction, and the inverse of subtraction is addition. So for the most part, when I see an addition sign, I'm going to be subtracting. When I see a subtraction sign, I'm going to be adding. You're doing the opposite operation. So I want to know if a plus 3 equals 10, what is a? So I need to get a by itself, so I need to get rid of plus 3. Well, I know 3 minus 3 is 0, so that accomplishes that. If I subtract 3 from this side, I have to subtract it from the other. That is your property of equality. Okay. Once again, if I just see this, that does not solve your equation. That means a plus 3 equals 10 minus 3, which is 7. That does not answer my question. Okay, do not do that. So I have a equals 7, and that is my solution. 3 minus 3 pretty much just cancels out, gives me 0. And I'm going to check. And when you do your check, what you're doing is if I know a is 7, then I'm going to plug that back in for the a. a plus 3. And I want to know, does it equal 10? Well, 7 plus 3 does equal 10, and 10 equals 10, so we know we did it right. It checks out. Okay, so that's why we want to do our check. Now, I have 14 equals s plus 7. So, once again, I want to get s by itself. So, in order to get rid of a positive 7 or a plus 7, I'm going to subtract 7 from both sides. Okay? 7 minus 7 is 0. That cancels. 14 minus 7 is 7. So, here's my solution. And to check and see if it works now, I'm going to do 14. And I want to know, does it equal... 7 plus 7. Well, 7 plus 7 is 14, and since 14 equals 14, it checks out, and we know we did it right. Remember, this is your solution. This is your check. <clears throat> now I have negative 1 equals q minus 8. Well, we know the inverse of a minus 8 is to add. Okay, I'm going to add 8. And once again, we add 8 because a negative 8 plus 8 is 0. They are opposites. Okay, so I'm going to add 8 to the other side as well. So negative 8 plus 8, I'm left with q. And negative 1 plus 8, now I'm using my integer rules. I have opposite signs. So when I have opposite signs, it's like subtraction. 8 minus 1 is 7. What's furthest from 0? Well, the 8 is, so it's going to be a positive 7. So I'm going to check that as well. If q is 7, then 7 minus 8 should equal negative 1. Now, just because I have switched the equal sign, I'm still checking from left to right. So I'm doing 7 minus 8, not 8 minus 7. 7 minus 8, and I'm going to add a line, change the sign, would leave me with a negative 1. 8 minus 7 is 1, and the negative 1 is furthest from 0. Well, negative 1 equals negative 1. So that checks out as well, and I know I did it right. Okay, now I have negative 2 equals p minus 13. Opposite of subtraction is to add 13. I'm going to add 13 over here. Okay, once again, a negative 13, these are opposites, plus 13 is 0. I'm left with p. 
negative 2 plus 13, they're opposite signs, so I do 13 minus 2, which is 11, and the 13 is furthest from 0, so it's going to be positive, so 11 equals P. Now I'm going to check. I want to know, is negative 2, is it equal to 11 minus 13? Well, once again, I'm going from left to right, so I'm going to add a line, change the sign, 11 plus negative 13, they are opposite signs. The negative 13 is furthest from 0, so it's going to be negative. And 13 minus 11 is 2. So I have negative 2 equals negative 2, and that checks out as well. So I know 11 equals P is my answer. Okay, last one. We're going to write an equation, then solve the equation and check your answer. So Zach is 15 years old. This is three years younger than his brother Tyler. How old is Tyler? Well, I don't know how old Tyler is, so Tyler's my unknown. So we're going to call him T. And T represents Tyler's age. Okay, this is three years younger than his brother Tyler. So Tyler is what I'm going to be doing the operation to. I know it's going to equal 15. Okay, Zach is 15. So if this is three years younger than his brother Tyler, in order to figure out Tyler's age, Zach is three years younger than him, I'm going to have to add 3. So Tyler's age plus 3 would equal 15. No, oh, I, I apologize. I did that the wrong way. Tyler's age minus 3 would equal 15. Okay, and the per reason for that is because Tyler is going to be older. So if he's three years older, I would have to subtract three years from his age to get Zach's age, which is 15. So in order to find out Tyler's age, I'm going to add three to both sides. Opposite of minus three is to do plus three. This cancels, and T equals 18. So how old is Tyler? Tyler is 18 years old. Okay, and to check it, I can do 18 minus 3 equals 15. 18 minus 3 is 15, so 15 equals 15, so I know I did it right. And then read the problem again, guys. If this is a word problem, if it doesn't make sense, then I know it's not going to work out. Zach is 15 years old. This is three years younger than his brother Tyler. So is T Zach's age younger than Tyler's? Well, yes. Tyler is 18, we found out, and Zach is 15, so I know that makes sense. So that is going to show me that I'm on the right track. Okay? Well, I hope this helped out. As always, if you have questions, make sure you bring them to class with you tomorrow. Uh, thank you for watching.